When I think of the beer style of brown ale, I typically think of the English variety, something like Newcastle Brown. But there is an American version of brown ale as well, and that is what I'm brewing today. I'm also going to have a go at roasting my own malt. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Now I've already taken a shot at brewing brown ale, at least the English version. And that beer style is really divided into a Northern English and Southern English version, where the Southern English style really emphasizes sort of rich caramel sweetness, whereas the Northern version looks more for a nutty characteristic in the beer. Now, American brown ale, it's a little bit bolder, a little bit stronger, and just a little bit hoppier too. In terms of my American brown ale, I'm building a beer with an original gravity of 1055, so about five and a half percent ABV. In terms of the grist, I'm adding in 71% of pale two-row malt, and then 13% of amber malt. More about that in just a second. In addition, I'm adding in Caramunic 1 at 9%. I have 5% of Special B and 2% of chocolate malt. So as you may have gathered, the amber malt that's in the mash right now, I made that. What I did is I took some pale two-row malt and I roasted it to become amber malt. And here's what I did. So I took the pale two-row malt and I put it out onto a baking tray. Then I set my oven to 350 Fahrenheit, 177 Celsius, and Threw it in there. So we're effectively kilning our malt here by putting it in the oven. You want to leave it in the oven for uh, between like 25 and 35 minutes, but you're going to want to keep an eye on it. What you're looking for in terms of appearance is a pale copper color, and it's worth just giving the, the grain a try as well. And you're looking for sort of a, a nutty, toasty taste, and you just want to be careful you don't take it too far and end up with a fully roasted malt. For me, 25 minutes was enough. Pulled out that grain, tasted delicious, put it into my grain mill, crushed it up. And now it's mashing away with the rest of the ingredients. Hops for this beer. I'm using for my bittering hop Cascade. We're looking to get uh, an IBU of about 27 from this beer and by adding in a bag or one ounce of Cascade at 60 minutes that will get us about 20 IBU. Then I have a mixture of Cascade and Willamette and I'm going to be adding that in as my flavor and aroma hop addition which does smell delicious. I'm going to add that in with five minutes to go. Recently I've been having a bit of a running battle with hydrometers and test jars in that I keep breaking them and I had a whole bunch of both of these things and, and now this is all I've got left. I find that I keep chipping these things and as you can see here this one is uh, not in the best of states and oh my goodness 
these hydrometers, I'll just move them around the brewery and then, whoops, tap them on a surface. Uh, and then they shatter. And there's these little black beads in here that go everywhere. So I've got a new hydrometer set because I know I'm gonna break this sooner or later. Let's take a look. So I found this on Amazon. Let's open it up and take a look what we've got. Okay, so we've got a new testing jar. I quite like the look of this one because it's got um, measurements along the side here. It also feels a bit more sturdy than this thing, this one here. Uh, perhaps it'll last me a little bit longer. There's a cleaning brush as well, which we can use to clean out the test jar. And of course, the hydrometer itself. This one looks much like my other one actually. And um, this one measures in specific gravity and also in Plato, as you would expect. So, armed with my new equipment, give it a try. beer in the fermenter. I have been using my fancy new hydrometer and measuring jar and that tells me that I got an original gravity of 1055. Now for the yeast for this beer I have made a starter of American Ale yeast. This is Y yeast 1056. This is a, a nice clean strain that I think will go pretty well with this beer. So I'm going to put this in the fermenter, I'm going to ferment at 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius, and then give it a taste. It's brown ale tasting time with Lauren. So do you remember back a few months ago now, you tried the English brown ale. Vaguely, vaguely. Mm. First of all, does it look like a brown ale? Yes. It yeah, looks. yeah. It, it looks look brown, right? Dark, yeah. dark brown. Not, yeah, dark brown, but the honeycomb gloss has a little bit of like amber. It has to be mentioned every single time we use it. I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. So, with the light coming Your through commission it? for selling the I should be. Glass. Whoever makes these glasses. These were bought for a dollar at the dollar store, so not much commission <laughs> to be made there. All right, so the brown ale is brown. Yeah. Uh, does it give us any sort of aroma, especially with the hops that we added to this one? It, yeah, it smells like the English brown ale, I think. It's got the sort of the, the roasted, um, the roasted, roasted maltiness of, of a, you know, the sort of brown ales that I was I was used to drinking growing up. Oh, I like this one. That's good. Yeah, I like this one. So this one is has got that brown ale taste that I got from the English brown ale, but there's definitely a little bit of um, something that the hops have added to this one as well. It's like a sweet, creamy, mm -hmm. thick, and light all at the same time, yeah. like combined into one. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, that's really right? good. I'm not sure I've ever had an American brown ale before. I've had plenty of Northern English brown ales, but this one with that little bit of hop character to it, mm. I think really adds something. This is this is wonderful. So next week we are darkening things up once again. Something you to look forward to, Lauren. Fantastic. Yeah. But until then, let's do the cheers. Cheers! Cheers!